Hey everyone, welcome to Unit 4, which is energy, in the Earth Science Review video series. This is going to be broken up into two separate videos, which will cover the whole energy unit. The first video is going to be focused on the electromagnetic spectrum, which is light, and also specific heat and some phase changes. All right. So without further ado, here we go. This, on page 14, is called the electromagnetic spectrum. There's a couple things you got to know about this chart. The first one is what wavelength means. It's the distance between the crests or the troughs of waves. So I'm going to draw a transverse wave for you. So the distance between the peaks and the valleys is called the wavelength right here or right here. Anywhere on the left side of the chart is short wave, as it says, decreasing wavelength right here. And then anywhere on the right side of the chart is long wave. So long wave transverse wave would look more like this. There would be bigger gaps between the crests and the troughs. So as you move to the right, the wavelength would go up. And as you move to the left, the wavelength would go down. So if I were to rank them, this would be number one, the longest. Then it would go two, three. Shoved in between infrared and ultraviolet is all the visible light. But this is still in the correct order. So the longest out of all the visible light would be red. So this is four, then five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we go to ultraviolet, 10, x rays 11, gamma 12. The shorter the wavelength, the more intense it is, or the stronger, or the most dangerous. And over here, these are not intense at all. So that's the electromagnetic spectrum. I just know how to read the chart. And you should also know that all of these come from the sun. So the sun gives off all of these. But not all of them reach the Earth because a lot of them get absorbed by the atmosphere. Going on to the next page. This page here on page one shows a chart for specific heat of common materials. Specific heat means how fast or slow something heats up or cool down. So normally, the more joules or heat energy required would mean that the object or, or substance takes longer to heat up. So liquid water is going to take longest to heat, and it's also going to take longest to cool. And then that would mean lead takes the shortest to heat and the shortest to cool because it has a lower number. Something to keep in mind is that basalt and granite right here make up our land, most of the crust of the earth. And the top three here are all the three different forms of water. So we got liquid water, solid water, which is ice, and water vapor, which is the gas form of water. There's a couple things to just uh, keep in mind. Everything on this chart is for one gram only. So if they ever ask you something like, oh, what is it for 10 grams? You would have to multiply this number by however many grams, which we'll get to it in a minute. So this is how many joules per one gram would raise the temperature by one degree Celsius. All right, that's this chart. And the next chart is properties of water, which is right underneath. This is on the front page as well. This has to do with phase changes. So like uh, solid to liquid would be melting. Freezing would be liquid to solid. Vaporization is the same thing as evaporation or boiling. This is liquid to gas. And then condensation is turning a gas into a liquid. The thing to notice about this chart is that phase changes take heat energy to make it happen. You can either gain the heat energy, which would be in terms of melting, it would take 334 joules to melt it, or you can take heat energy away, which is the same thing as saying heat energy released. So freezing, to freeze something, you would have to take away 334 joules. These guys are opposites. In order to boil something, you have to the object has to gain heat, so you have to add it to the object, and you have to add 2,260 joules for every one gram. 
to get something to vaporize in terms of water. And to get water to condense, you have to take away or release 2,260 joules for every one gram. The big thing to know about this chart is whether or not you are adding or gaining or if you're releasing or taking away. That's going to tell you about the phase. And the second thing to know is that it takes more energy to vaporize or condense than it does to melt or freeze. This is a more intense process, takes more, more energy. Okay, so let's do some questions. You know the drill by now if you watch my other videos. Pause the video, see if you can get this answer correct, and then I'm going to sort of explain why. Number one, which type of land surface will most likely absorb the greatest amount of incoming solar radiation? This means light from the sun. Now, if you've ever been on vacation, you know black color is a good absorber of heat. And coincidentally, anything that's a good absorber is also a good radiator of heat. Meaning it, it, it also gives it off. Now the opposite is good for white or light. White is a bad absorber of heat. So in other, in other words, we say it's a good reflector. Or you could say it's a bad absorber. Now along with white, another good reflector absorber is if it's smooth, a smooth texture. Or for black, another good absorber or good radiator is a rough texture. So these are opposites. Um, an example of something that's dark and rough would be like pavement. That's That gets really hot. Or like sand. Um, another thing that's like light and smooth over here, an example is like ice. So the answer to this, which type of surface will absorb the greatest amount? You want rough and dark color, A. Number two, which type of electromagnetic radiation has the longest wavelength? So you're gonna go to page 14, which is the chart we talked about, and you're gonna figure out radio, gamma, visible, or ultraviolet, which one is the longest. So if we go back here, as you go to the right, it gets longer. So radio waves wins. Radio waves going to be the longest wavelength. D. Gamma would be the shortest. Number three. Which type of surface would probably reflect the most incoming solar radiation, which is sun? Sunlight, you could say. So for this, if you paid attention during number one, you should know that the best reflectors are light colored and smooth. The answer is A. Number four, equal masses of granite, iron, copper, and lead are placed in sunlight. Based on specific heat, which material will warm up the fastest? Remember, the lowest specific heat will take the shortest amount of time to heat. So your answer to this should have been lead. So if I were to rank these, lead would win. Lead would be number one. And then second would be copper. Copper would heat up the second fast. And then we got iron coming in third at third fast. And then that means granite would take the longest out of the four. Number five, compared with the change of temperature of the water, the change in temperature of the land will be what? So they want you to compare the water here to the land here. You need a specific heat chart because clearly they're asking you about that in all the choices. So they want to know, will the land be faster or slower than water? 
We said in the beginning, basalt and granite make up the land. Water takes the longest. So land's going to be faster so I can get rid of C and D. And is it because land has a lower specific heat or land has a higher specific heat? According to the chart, the land has the lower specific heat. So the answer is A. Number six, a little math question. How much heat energy will be lost by a two gram mass of water as it cools from 40 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius? So for this one, this is a specific heat question. And here is the little math formula. You do the amount times the specific heat of the material times the temperature change. So the first thing you do is you're going to want to say, OK, what is the amount? Well, it says it right here, 2 grams times whatever the material is. They want to know about water. And it's in the liquid phase because it's above uh, freezing. So 4.18 is the specific heat times however much the temperature changed. In this case, the temperature changed. It went from 40 to 35. So it changed by 5 degrees. So now you do 2 times 5 times 4.18. And you put that in your calculator, and you will get about 41.8. So I'm going to pick the closest answer. The answer will be C, 41.2. Sometimes it'll say approximately. Um, but if not, you would just pick the closest answer. Number seven, what is the heat energy required to change 2 grams of liquid water at 100 degrees Celsius to water vapor at 100 degrees Celsius? Now the reason this is not like the other one is because there is a phase change in this question. The phase change is going from liquid water to water vapor. And if you know your phase changes, this is called vaporization. So you look on your properties of water chart, you find vaporization, which is right here. It takes 2,260 for, remember, one gram. They're asking about two grams. So you just do 2,260 times two. So you're going to get D, 4,520. Number eight, how many joules of heat energy would be required to melt a five gram piece of ice at zero degrees Celsius? Melt, there is a phase change here. So now we got to figure out, okay, how much does it take to melt? It takes 334. But this is for one gram only. So in order to figure out how many for five grams, you just do 334 times five. And if you do that, you get 1,670. So the answer is C. Number nine. Last one, the diagram shows the types of electromagnetic energy given off by the sun. Remember, it's all of the types. The shaded part shows the approximate amount of each type that actually reaches the Earth. And we said the rest is absorbed by the atmosphere. So it seems like, by the chart, we get a little bit of visible light. Uh, sorry, we get a little bit of ultraviolet a lot of visible light, and a little bit of infrared. This is heat. This is what actually gets through. So now, look at your choices. All types of energy reach the Earth's surface? No, because these gamma's empty, x-rays empty, and radio's empty. Gamma and x-rays make up the greatest amount reaching the Earth's surface? No, they have none. Visible light makes up the greatest amount of energy reaching the Earth's surface? Yes. Ultraviolet and infrared radiation make up the greatest amount. Uh, no, there's only a little bit here and a little bit here. So that's wrong. So the answer is C. So I hope that was helpful. Um, stay tuned for the second part of the energy unit, which will be coming up shortly, or you can just click on to the next video if it's already there. All right, good luck. See you on the next one.